This webinar is sponsored by NEC Corporation, a $37 billion technology leader with a 100-year history of innovation. NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite was the first data center-grade SDN leveraging the OpenFlow protocol. Deployed globally today, Programmable Flow transforms network performance and agility by providing production-ready SDN solutions that increase flexibility, visibility, and efficiency while reducing complexity and costs. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and network function virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash SDN. I've told you what OpenFlow is, and now let's see how we can use OpenFlow. I'll start with probably the best published OpenFlow use case, which is OpenFlow at Google. The problem they had was a traditional traffic engineering problem. As I told you before, it's really hard to solve that problem with high link utilization through a distributed mechanism. If you don't believe me, just go and browse through past RIPE and NANOC presentations. Every single presentation that has traffic engineering in the title complains about the complexity of MPLS traffic engineering and what a pain it is in real life. What Google did was they went like, okay, we know how much traffic goes between data center A and B. We know the traffic matrix. We know which application talks to which other application. So we have the full traffic matrix. Now we want to load the links as much as possible. They could have used the solutions that were available for the last 20 years. After all, after Cisco came out with MPLS traffic engineering, it was iOS release 12.0T, if I remember correctly, people started writing applications that would compute paths across the network and install manually configured hop-by-hop -hop traffic engineering paths. So there were service providers that did what Google wanted to do 15 years ago, but Google wanted to do it in a better way. Also, they wanted to implement their idea of customized router control software. What they did was they implemented what you would call WAN edge switches. Instead of using a Nexus 7000 or a Juniper MX router, they built a cloth fabric of 10 gig switches at their data center edge. And they have a cluster of OpenFlow controllers that control those switches. The whole complex of data center edge switches and the controllers behave like a single node when looked at from the outside. And that node then runs traditional routing protocols, BGP and ISIS, with the data center and with other data centers, which is an excellent idea because if a data center becomes isolated, if the network partitions, if anything goes wrong, if controller fails, they still have traditional IP routing using traditional protocols that just work. And then they have a centralized traffic engineering application which computes the optimal path for every traffic entry point in the traffic matrix and downloads those path elements into the individual controllers which then use OpenFlow to download the forwarding entries into the actual switching hardware. Identical functionality as the PCEP protocol, but implemented through a slightly different mechanism. It's interesting to see how they carefully chose a match between the traditional distributed routing protocols and a centralized application. Here I have a question exactly on this topic. Having a single controller sounds dangerous if the device should somehow lose connection to it. Absolutely agree. You have to remember that the single cluster of controller and controlled switches is a single failure domain. 
Now you could have a controller cluster like NEC has in their programmable flow solution. Their solution is an open flow fabric for the data center and obviously it has two controllers. If one controller fails or crashes or the server is lost or link fails or whatever, the other controller immediately takes over. You want to know the details? We discuss them in Programmable Flow Deep Dive webinar, which is freely available on the website. However, the principle of this solution is that the switches can always talk to the controllers. They have an out-of-band control plane network, which is fully redundant with at least two switches, and the programmable flow controllers have redundant interfaces. Everything is fully redundant, so if a controller is operational, it never loses connectivity to the switch. If one controller crashes, but the connectivity is still there, then the other controller takes over. Obviously, this is a great solution in a controlled environment, but I wouldn't run this across unreliable WAN links where you can lose all WAN links between two sites, and then you get into sort of a split brain mode where you have brains on one side and the other side is brainless and sort of incapacitated. Which is why Google's idea is so nice. They're using traditional routing within one switch in double quotes they use open flow controller they have something very similar to what nec has with the programmable flow between the data centers they first use traditional routing protocols so if the network partitions no problem internet works their network works and then they install long-lived information the traffic matrix from the central application and if that fails if everything falls apart they are back to bgp and isis but coming forward to nec's use case what they built with programmable flow is a full end-to-end -end data center switching fabric they can even go into the hypervisors be it hyper-v or open vswitch and the programmable flow controller manages end-to-end -end path from the virtual switch, top of rack switch, spine switch, top of rack switch, the other virtual switch, or the physical network. The whole data center fabric appears, and this is the beauty of this, as a single management and configuration entity. I already mentioned what they can implement as the application on top of that is the virtual tenant network with virtual bridges, routers, packet filters, traffic redirection, and QoS capabilities. Every tenant can build their own virtual network using as many switches, routers, IP addressing, MAC addressing, what have you. And then the programmable flow controller compiles that based on the physical network topology and the discovered endpoints and downloads the flow entries into the edge switches. I would use this in mid-sized virtualized data centers. There are a number of interesting applications where you can use this for service insertion or traffic tapping that I'll mention on the next slide, or network function virtualization, which will be the topic of the next section. Mentioning traffic tapping, there are two very nice things you can do with OpenFlow switches. Don't get me wrong, you can do all these things with any traditional switch. It's just that we never had the capability to program it. For example, I mentioned already that you can use OpenFlow to send the traffic through multiple ports at the same time. You can implement with OpenFlow something like a span port, but with way better granularity. So you don't have to mirror a port to a span port you can mirror HTTP protocol to a span port. Or you can use OpenFlow in the aggregation network to implement programmatic filters. Or you can say, okay, I want this traffic coming from this port delivered to multiple output ports. And because you're doing the heavy lifting with all the filtering in the aggregation network, 
you save on the bandwidth requirements of the monitoring devices. Even better, you can do this with simple top of rack data center switches supporting OpenFlow. You can buy TAP aggregation network solutions from a few vendors. They're specialized, they tend to be expensive. Here, you can use regular hardware that you would use in your data center otherwise and use OpenFlow to program it and use it in either mirroring capability or in TAP aggregation network. If you run out of bandwidth on the monitoring devices, you can use OpenFlow to distribute the load. We could always do that with smart layer 3 forwarding. You could use policy-based routing, you could use equal cost multipathing, and so on and so on. The problem of all those solutions was that they were harder to implement and they only worked with devices from one vendor. If you have an OpenFlow controller, that starts by distributing the load based on source IP address, for example, to different IPS, IDS devices. It can also monitor how much traffic is sent to individual device and then adjust the flow granularity. With this, each appliance will receive the amount of traffic it can handle. And more importantly, what you don't get with traditional equal cost multipathing each appliance will receive all traffic from a certain endpoint. So you will have complete session and endpoint behavior visibility. Going one step forward, you can use the information reported by these devices to establish a feedback loop with the OpenFlow controller. There are commercial combinations doing that, for example, NEC, Programmable Flow, and Radware. Even open source software already has it. Bro IDS has an OpenFlow module. You can use that module to push blocking entries into the OpenFlow switch so that the traffic that is qualified as denial of service traffic or malware or what have you is automatically dropped on the ingress switch. If you want to know more about the SDN use cases, I would strongly recommend that you go and watch the SDN use cases webinar where we go through these and many other use cases in way more details and tell you how to start considering them in your environment. Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation. For more information on NEC or the Programmable Flow Networking Suite, visit us online at necam.com slash SDN. To arrange a demo or to pilot Programmable Flow SDN, call your NEC account rep or contact NEC directly at necam.com slash contact us. Thank you for your interest in NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite. Additional SDN, OpenFlow, and network function virtualization webinars, recordings, and workshops, as well as other resources like books and case studies, are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash SDN.